A year and a half later, the Justice Department discovered that his car was up on, a, on blocks and it hadn't gone anywhere and he hadn't broken any laws. But by that time, it had cost him a fortune. And, uh, you know, he had to go through all that for us to be here today. Uh, never fair, fair, never fail to give this man uh, your greatest affection and respect. Thank you very much, Bob. Yeah. Well, I don't know what to say. Uh, what, what he said was pretty much uh, exactly right on. I've been working in in the hydroxy gas research for a number of years, 27 years to be exact. I started in 1982, and uh, by 1986, I had actually was running uh, hydrogen uh, jet drive boats with hydrogen gas, and I had developed systems for generating hydroxy gas on demand that we could actually fuel these uh, these engines. Uh, didn't have any problems with that. Uh, actually, I was truthful, you know, in the running hydrogen fuel. I'm just kidding. I just got tired of it by 1989, getting torn down. Because <laughs> when you win, win enough races and they want to know why, because you're generating a lot of power. Uh, so. I discovered the resonance drive system and that totally took my focus off of racing and it was an accidental discovery. Uh, we actually had an alternator that went uh, bad on us, a diode in the alternator that was putting a waveform on the DC bus and it was adding a, a slight sine wave with a little spike. <laughs> Uh, looked right. at it with a scope. I said, well, kind you know, of place where I can't if, really if this is doing this, I can duplicate this. And that's that's right. what I did. I actually did it electronically and was like able to uh, do uh, repeatable resonance drive experiments. So I took what was an anomaly and turned it into a repeatable ordeal. I did a lot of research. Um, I had, thank God, I had a, the use of a university lab that was near my facility that would do all of my analysis for free as class projects. And uh, when I had progressed to do an automotive, I was, I was I had no problem with boats. Um, I had uh, 19, 1973, it was a, a Plymouth with a 170 CID slant six engine. It was given to me as a donor vehicle and I started doing experiments with that. I was running it on hydroxy gas, on demand. But the vehicle wasn't being driven. Like Joe had said, I put it up on jack stands in, in my, my machine shop, which was behind my regular business, and was doing my experimentation on that vehicle up on jack stands, running it. And I was actually generating the, the power to run that from the alternator on the vehicle. So it was actually running it, it running itself. And, uh, I had started having problems with break-ins in the, uh, the shop with people coming in there and, uh, at night. They, they, apparently they took pictures of the vehicle and they actually stole from my prototypes. And then uh, it happened again, they smashed prototypes. I finally got the idea that I wasn't supposed to be doing that. <laughs> well, in 1991, uh, I was actually charged with EPA violations or altering emissions on internal combustion engines. And now, mind you, I'm not driving the car. You know, it's up on jack stands. They had somebody that came, came forward to be a witness against me. They said they witnessed me and my wife going down the road in this car. Uh, that was all they needed to charge me. And went to court, went to trial, uh, and I lost. I uh, was sentenced to three and a half years in prison. Didn't go. My wife was sentenced to probation. She started with probation. I, I paid a, a appeal bond, as it's called paid the bond and got out because the judge actually knew. He said he told me to take it to, to appeal to win. Because essentially what they did was they played on the, the, the motions of the jury. Look, we can't have people doing this during our air. We find this guy guilty regardless of the lack of evidence. We proved that the witness was lying. We had the time card, you know, to show my wife was at work on the day and time it was supposedly it happened. And but Yet they said, oh, well, maybe maybe the witness was mistaken. Well, if a witness is mistaken about a date and time, then maybe that isn't such a good witness after all. And their own photographs prove the vehicle was up on jack stands with no tires on it. So, you know. Well, we won the appeal. 
but I'd had enough. I tried to I tried to sue the state and found that even if you get a judgment against the state of Florida, the uh, state legislature has approved the payout. So it's a waste of time. I just said the heck with it. Get the heck out of the state of Florida. So you know. So what left? I, what little I had left, we moved up to Tennessee, where I continued my research, and uh, I had a lot of a lot of experience under my belt. You know, designing these systems. I had done the uh, what a lot of people call the dry cell. I call that the sealed cell, sealed series cell. And I designed those. That was one of my first series cell designs, actually. And uh, I had taken that design, uh, the blueprints for that, and given those to Taro so that he could actually duplicate that. He was one of these guys that was skeptics that said, "No, you can't. You can't make that much gas out of one of these units." And I said, "Sure, I can." So. I sent him the blueprints, and he copied it, built a unit, tested it, and said, hey, it does do what he says it does. Turned him around. And then uh, uh, that design came to be known as the Taro cell because he wrote a report on it. <laughs> okay. Well, that's the same exact unit that is incorporated into the cell. It's the same design system, except that there's been some added enhancements done to it. Um, the, the big 100 cell series box in my past uh, 60 cells, 70 cell, 80 cells, all of those, those are resonance based designs. They can be used brute force too, or catalytic, but those were actually designed for the resonance drive systems. But practical systems, for practical applications, requires a system that's easier to build that can be used on an everyday basis you know, for boosting fuel economy on vehicles. So we had to come out with really simple designs, seven cell designs, eight cell, six cell, you know, different flavors. It's all variants of the same thing. It's, it's an efficient design. And if it's built according to my specifications, it works very well. And that is, the, the whole goal is to reduce the amount of voltage required to push a given amount of current through the cells. A lot of people miss that design concept. Uh, they go with, you know, all these various uh, construction techniques, and they don't keep track of that, the efficiency, how much power it takes. Why is it important? It's important because that power has to come from the alternator of the vehicle. And if you draw too much power, it's, it's kind of hard to make up that power by increasing the efficiency of the vehicle. So that's why a lot of these, these uh, poorly efficient designs don't really work very well, or don't work at all. It takes too much power to run them. So if you use a good design practice and you make good efficient cells, you can make an improvement in the fuel economy of these vehicles. And now, everybody has different motives. Some people do it for the money. Some people do it because they want to save gas. Some people do it because of the, the, uh, the environment. My driving goal is the environment. That's the way I look at it. My granddaughters need to have clean air to breathe, you know, when they grow up without having to wear an oxygen mask. 